Mark Wahlberg has made a career of reinventing himself like no one else in show business. Today, he's not only one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood, he's also one of the top producers. This from somebody who was sitting in a Boston prison when most kids his age were graduating from high school. The former Street Tough has been nominated for an Academy Award and is an executive producer of four television shows. But now he's on the verge of unveiling a highly anticipated movie that became an obsession. He produced and stars in The Fighter, an intense and true family drama about two boxing brothers from Wahlberg's native Massachusetts. The Fighter will premiere next month, but tonight you'll get a peek at what Mark Wahlberg says is the most satisfying and brutal project he's ever been involved in. The story will continue in a moment. In the movie, Wahlberg plays Irish Mickey Ward, the blue-collar boxer and perennial underdog from Lowell, Massachusetts, who struggles to emerge from the shadow of his older brother, Dickie, a promising boxer turned crackhead, played by Christian Bale. Why am I the problem? I'm his blood. I'm his family. I'm the one fighting, okay? Not you, not you, and not you. Wasting time. The rocky relationship between the two brothers is at the heart of the fighter. For the movie's boxing scenes, Wahlberg stepped into the ring himself. Stuntmen were out of the question. Was it hard to just stand and take it and take it and take it? It doesn't tickle, that's for sure. Did you ever get hurt? I almost got my nose broken a couple times because when we shot the fights, the goal for me was always to make it as real as possible. To that end, Wahlberg got ready for the film as if he was training for a title fight. I didn't want to look like an actor who could box. I wanted to look like a boxer who could win the world title. We trained right here. At his home in Beverly Hills... This is where we choreographed all the fights. Wahlberg built a boxing mecca, complete with a top-of-the-line ring. You took this seriously. We were in here eight, ten hours a day. It was here that he brought the real brothers, Mickey and Dickie, to help with his training. Mark trained for the role for four years, not knowing whether one frame of the film would ever be shot. The fighter almost didn't get made. Directors and co-stars came and went. Did you ever think, you know, gosh, I'm never going to get this made. This is just impossible. There were certainly times where I would wake up at 4.30 in the morning, you know, I, my trainer would ring the bell and I'd be like, oh gosh. <laughs> I'd be like, I better get this movie made. You know, I'm going to kill somebody if we don't get it made. Did you get obsessed with it? I was, yeah. I was. What made you say, this is the one? What was it about it? I was such a huge Mickey Ward fan. Always? Even growing yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, God, you know, the name Mickey Ward was to me like the name Larry Bird, just a local sports hero. <laughs> in Mickey Ward, Mark also saw glimpses of his own story. Like Ward, Wahlberg was one of nine kids and grew up in working-class Massachusetts. Were these streets really rough when you were growing up? We went back with Wahlberg to his hometown of Dorchester, a scrappy section of Boston. The old guy from the store? Yeah. He thinks I owe him money. <laughs> Do you owe money? I think it's my brother owes him money. <laughs> it's my brother, Georgie! <laughs> it's my brother! <laughs> Wilberg dropped out of school when he was 13. He ran with the wrong crowd and from the law. What happened to a lot of the other kids that were on the streets with you? Um, well, unfortunately, you know, a lot of my friends are either dead or in jail, you know? Mark used to sneak out of his bedroom window and hit the streets for late nights of boozing, brawling, dealing and stealing. Were you a good thief? I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I was pretty daring. You were paying the neck, but you were always, <laughs> always respectful. A rare positive influence for Mark was Father Jim Flavin. The street punk and the parish priest struck up an unlikely friendship. Father Flavin saw a glimmer of Warburg's future one day during one of Mark's many appearances in court before a judge. He was just ported on to the judge, you know, I'll never do it again. You know, I'm sorry. And he was wonderful, you know, he started tearing up and the judge just melted and said, all right, you know, this will be it. And, and he turned around and started out and he looked at me and winked. And I said, you little bugger. <laughs> I was an Academy Award performance in the courtroom. 
Father Flavin says that he could barely see you over the steering wheel when you were driving around waving at him from stolen cars. That is true. <laughs> I just like to drive. A lot of people like to drive cars. They don't necessarily steal them to drive them. Well, that was not a good idea. But on an April night in 1988, Mark's crimes turned more serious. He attacked a man with a stick on this Dorchester sidewalk simply because he wanted the man's two cases of beer. Did you realize that this man who you'd hit with a stick in the eye, that he'd lost his eye and that he... No. When did you find story. out? Not until later, until we started going through the court proceedings. What did you think? Oh my God, I was just, you know, horrified. Did you ever apologize to the man that you hurt? Yes. I got up in front of the court, was able to address the court and him, and, uh, and then, you know, they just put the shackles on me and took me away. Wahlberg pled guilty and was sent to a 19th century prison. He was 17. It was the worst prison we had in Boston. And he was afraid? He'd never admit it. But you thought he was? Yeah. At first I'm like, and well, I'm one of the guys now. I made it. Then I realized, well, this is what it means to be one of the guys. And I just wanted more out of my life. After serving 45 days in prison, his life turned when he followed his older brother Donnie into a music studio. Mark became a new man.